Hello, this is John, and I'll be showing you how to use Team Viewer to connect to a remote computer. The first thing I'm going to have you do is go to TeamViewer.com and go ahead and click on this download button. Both your computer and the computer you want to connect to need to have this installed. The installation is really quick and straightforward. Just go ahead and click Save. It'll download quickly. And once it's finished, just go ahead and open it up and install it. And you want to click Run here. You can either choose to run it as it is, or you can install it so that it will be here for future use. I'm going to pick the installation. And here you want to mark it for personal, otherwise it will limit your use. And here you want to leave the default on no. Okay, and now it's fully installed. And this is the first screen you come up to. The numbers you need to pay attention to here are the ID. This is your unique ID. And then this is the password. The password will change from time to time, or you can also set one up. In order to connect to someone else, you need their ID number and they will also need to tell you their password but we don't need that just yet for now we only need the ID of the remote machine that you want to connect to for this demonstration I'll be connecting to my home computer and I have that number stored and here's where we need the password my temporary password is DJ571Z and then I'm going to click enter. And now we're brought onto my home computer's desktop. Now that I'm on my home computer, I can make changes to anything I want. I can open up browsers. I can go anywhere I like. I can even install drivers or applications. Just about do anything as if I was sitting at the computer. At this point, I just want to go over some of the features in this top toolbar here. This X will close out our session. This Actions area will contain settings and also commands that you can send to the remote computer, such as Control Delete, locking the computer, reboots including log off, reboot, and rebooting in safe mode, which can be very useful. You can also send other key combinations. You can disable your input, or else you can show a black screen on their side so that they can't see what you are doing. The next menu is View. This menu contains things that can be adjusted for quality, to optimize the speed so there's not as much delay when you move things around or if there's a big delay when you open something up and when it actually happens. You can also change the scaling because here I'm connecting to a monitor that has a 4-3 ratio and I'm on a laptop right now that has the 16-9 but luckily it can be scaled or you can also switch to full screen. The active monitor can be switched, so if the person has two displays, you can see the other one. The resolution can also be changed, so that you can also eliminate any lag times. You can select single windows. You can refresh it. You can show the remote cursor, because sometimes you can't always find what, where the person is looking. The audio and video section contains voice over IP. Also has chat and conference calls. The conference calls do cost some money, they are 5 cents a minute, which isn't too bad if you need to use it in a pinch. The file transfer menu will allow you to send files to the remote computer. File transfer will be a lot like an FTP where you can take any file from my computer and transfer it over to this computer, like this. As you can see, it's pretty quick if it's a small file. If it's bigger, it'll take longer, of course. And that's just an example, so I'm going to close out. And this is just a little file transfer log, so you can see everything that's been transferred. Also in the file transfer area is the file box, where you can drag a file from my computer into here, and then it can be dropped 
in this computer. But the remote computer would have to go and open it, like this. Then you can open it, or save it, or keep it where it is, and you'll have it forever. You can also use this to transfer drivers, or any kind of files, to and from both computers. Not strictly just from your computer to the remote one. You can also take files from the remote computer and put them on yours. This can be very useful when you're having problems with drivers, or if you want to back up someone's files. The extras section contains some nice features, like the ability to take a screenshot, the ability to record the whole session that you are doing, you can establish a VPN connection, you can force a remote update of the TeamViewer software on their computer, you can get remote system info, here it will display the basic information like on my computer, what the type of computer processor is running, how much memory it has, what service pack, all that kind of stuff, What also what hard drives are available and how much room they have, also their IP addresses and bandwidth, a lot of good information. Also in here is the connection information that will show you how long you've been connected and how much data has gone back and forth. Also there are two smaller buttons under here. This one will make it all full screen so you can see the whole screen almost as if you're sitting there. Again this is a 4-3 ratio that I'm connecting to so that's why it doesn't fill up my whole screen and then you can hit minimize and it'll just go away this is my desktop now and then here you can fold up this menu to have more room to work and this is pretty much all the features of TeamViewer as you can see using TeamViewer is very quick and easy is a lot less difficult to use than the other remote programs and it doesn't require port forwarding or any tunneling anything will just work right out of the box so if the computer has internet you're going to be able to connect and start helping people it is good to be familiar with many remote programs because sometimes not all of them will work I had to use this one when I was working last fall and it was very useful in connecting to some computers that were not on our domain this one is currently my favorite because it does not require very much work to get it all set up and working. But everybody has their own opinions and VNC and the other programs are very good as well. Just this one's very easy to use. But at this time I'd like to wrap up my video on TeamViewer. I hope this has been informative for you and I hope it'll help you in the future. Thank you for watching this demonstration and please watch my other videos here on this YouTube channel as well. Thanks again. Goodbye.